Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Charm YouTube channel. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Charm, hi, welcome in. We are a company that aims to glamorize the command line, meaning that we build Go libraries that help kind of expand upon the existing power of the command line and terminals. We've built applications as well, including SoftServe, a self-hostable Git server, Wish, a middleware for facilitating SSH accessible applications, Bubble Tea, which is for building interactive TUIs in the terminal. Things like that are all under the purview of glamorizing the command line. And that is what we aim to do here at Charm. Today, I'm gonna to be telling you about what we got up to this summer, meaning we had a lot of different releases, some new features, some collaborations, things like that. I'm gonna be updating you on what you need to know, what we've been up to, okay? Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, for those of you who don't know, we do have a blog, which is what I have up right now. And as you can see, we do have a wishlist article. So we had a release for wishlist that was in collaboration with Tailscale. So at this stage, we're basically able to have automatic host discovery and you're able to connect to your Tailnet through Wishlist. So essentially what you need is either a Tailscale API access token or you can use their OAuth client. The OAuth client is nice because you can kind of limit the app access to your Tailscale info. I mean, to be fair, wishlist is open source, so you can see what everything that we do. But regardless, I always personally like to follow the principle of least privilege. So I would recommend probably using one of their OAuth clients. And you can see actually in the article here that it specifies like how you can uh, configure that. But essentially, you just start wishlist with some of the tail scale flags and include all the info that you need there. Uh, we've also added support for zero conf. So now if you have any, if you're a Mac user or which uses Bonjour or on Linux, you're using any other kind of uh, services that use zero conf, uh, which means that it shows up with a dot local domain. Those now all show up in wishlist as well, which is great. And then we also now provide support for service records. So essentially, if you have an application that's running and you want it to be accessible with a certain port and protocol and it won't, you want it to be accessible from a certain endpoint, essentially when you create that DNS service record, it, you can also now enable that with wishlist. I'll show you what that, what that looks like here. Here you can see little Carlos had provided an example there. Another really cool feature that we added to wishlist is hints. So this one, you can essentially provide a uh, glob. So like some kind of, uh, some kind of like pattern to be matched. And then anything that matches that pattern, you can specify what you want, the port description user, any of the configuration you can specify based on the pattern matching, which is huge. It really streamlines your configuration for a lot of things. So very, very cool features there. And if you want, you can also check out the release notes. I'll be sure to include that in the description in case you wanna further your reading. Um, I'll include a link to both the blog post and the release notes for that one. So thank you very much to Tailscale for partnering with us, by the way. That's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. And uh, they, they also have a blog post, so I'll link that as well, yeah. And for those of you who actually don't know what Tailscale is, uh, get with it. Tailscale is incredible. So it, I use Tailscale. It essentially allows you to connect device like machine to machine. So it actually will bypass, like you don't have to modify or open up your firewall settings or anything like that to enable your um, access to from one machine to another. So for example, if you're on your laptop a lot, but you like to host things on your server at home, you can use Tailscale and it essentially uses WireGuard under the hood. If you wanna learn more about that, I will also link in the description, some resources there that you can read. Um, but it essentially uses the WireGuard protocol under the hood, creates an encrypted tunnel, and you can actually just SSH onto your other machines. I believe that they have more than just SSH accessibility. I've only used the SSH functionality for uh, tail scale, but it, yeah, it's just machine to machine. So it will bypass any, like it, it doesn't actually give it access to the local network that 
that machine is running on. It's like just access to that machine only. Very cool, very innovative. Love TailScale. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then let's move on to our soft serve release. So huge soft serve now supports Git LFS. So that means that your repos can now be itty bitty while providing great assets. So if you've got video files or other media files that take up a lot of space, you can instead use Git LFS so that you can track those files with, with Git LFS, meaning that the files themselves will only be stored on the remote server. And when people are cloning the repo, it's not actually going to like download all of those big files. And how that works is you essentially give Git LFS some kind of pattern to track and it will it will track all of the files in the repo that match that pattern. And instead of actually, uh, when you clone the repo, instead of actually like downloading all of those files as well, it just provides like a text, basically like a text reference of like this file exists. At least that's my understanding of that. <laughs> Git LFS support, huge for soft serve. It now means that all of your stuff is staying on the server and keeps your repos itty bitty while providing good documentation or good assets that you can uh, continue to support. We've also allowed for collaborator access levels to be managed from the command line. So there's now a uh, repo collab command so you can add different collaborators and specify what access level they should have to each of the repos and we've also included an example here because i have seen this question at least once if you are using soft serve and you've got certain collaborators that you want to have access to multiple repositories how would you do that and here is how you could do that <laughs> literally just bash little bash script little wow loop and uh yeah that, that's that's the working example right there and read write is the default access. If it's not specified, you can always also make it read only or whatever for any of your private repos. And then here you can also choose to authenticate over HTTP, HTTPS. And we've provided some examples on basically how you can create a uh, token and auth the auth token and do that with, S with your SSH key. And then you'll be able to basically clone whatever repos and access it um, from soft serve in the way that you would normally expect you can. <laughs> we also have provided Postgres support. So we were using SQLite before as the way to basically persist your configuration files and data and all of that. Um, we were using SQLite being stored locally on your database. But for those of you who want something more scalable, we now support Postgres. And we've provided some examples here on how you can get that all set up with Postgres. It looks pretty straightforward. And uh, yeah, that's that's the TLDR of what we've done with SoftServe. If you want to learn a little bit more about how Git large file storage works, I'll walk you through that right here. I'll also, again, links in the description. Alrighty, and then for Git large file storage, this is so bright. Put your sunglasses on, okay? Warning. So essentially, as I was saying, it replaces large files such as audio samples, videos, data sets, anything else that's massive gigabytes of, of files, you know what I'm saying? Um, it, it replaces them with text pointers inside of Git while storing the file contents on the remote server like GitHub or GitHub Enterprise or SoftServe. So you can have it stored locally on a home server. It can now live on your home server instead of any other machines that want to clone the info. And then of course, they've got some getting started info here, which uh, also was provided in the blog post. And now beyond that, we also had pop that launched. I should show you the blog post for that one as well. <laughs> for those of you who missed it, I did do a YouTube short for pop to like announce the collaboration and stuff like that. That was actually kind of brutal. I had just gotten my wisdom teeth out and was like trying my best to talk, but oh my gosh, my mouth was so swollen when I was filming that. So we did a collaboration with Resend, our friends at Resend and we built POP. So this is kind of just a fun little project that Moss decided to build in partnership with Resend using their API. You're now able to send emails from the terminal. And with the latest release, we added SMTP support, of course, duh. For those of you who wanna be able to, you know, use your existing email uh, configurations, or whatever, your existing email setup uh, with POP. So 
That makes it pretty straightforward. SMTP support, we're just using environment variables to set those. And uh, yeah, that's that's the, the biggest, biggest change for POP. We love that. And then VHS also had a release. The latest release, uh, I think for me, the the point that stands out is the alt and shift modifiers. So now we do support alt and shift as modifiers for uh, different actions that you want to do in VHS. So that makes it really nice. You no longer need to have the cursor blinking by default. Oh yes, the braille characters. I think there there is a, a an open issue still for that one, but this was basically to try and resolve that on the Apple operating system. We still need to fix something I think on Linux. I gotta double check. But yeah, that's the latest of what we were up to with VHS. And then gum, the classic, the good old script buddy gum. Now you can actually search your pager. I don't know if you can see this GIF is itty bitty. Let's open it in a new tab. So now you can actually search the pager. So when you have a script that is opening up some kind of markdown file or code file or anything, you can now search for specific matches and stuff like that. It uses Vim keybinds by default. And then we had a bunch of all new features as well and some incredible new contributors. Thank you to everyone who makes all of these releases possible, uh, both internally at Charm your pog champ thank you for being so cool and also to the community that is incredible and super fun to hang out with in the discord so if you haven't joined the discord already get on it we're all in there hanging out and having a good old time but that is essentially what we've been up to we also have some features so for example our friends at truffle did have a talk about us at defcon gave us a little shout out if i can find the recording for that i will link it in the description so far no dice but if I do find it, I will link it. And the lovely Changelog podcast decided to give us another feature, which is very kind. And CockroachDB, our friend uh, Kanzi, thank you so much for advocating for us at your company. And if any of you are using us at your company, let us know uh, how our tools are being used internally at other companies. Of course, please don't break your uh, non-disclosure contract. That would be very unfortunate please don't do that but just if you have any any fun insights on different ways that you've been able to leverage our projects please let us know but CockroachDB has decided to leverage us and upgraded their cli using bubble tea and i will link all of these in the description below so that you can have some little morning readings with your coffee anyway i'll see you guys in the next one thank you so much for hanging out and that's the update that's the latest we've got more videos coming up so if you like golang you like whatever i don't know there's a tutorial here that i'll link for you because uh, I, I put a lot of work into that so if you want to by the end of it you'll have your very own task warrior that you can improve because there's probably some bugs okay bye